welcome back to my channel. So today I will be doing the part four. Yeah, I think it's part four of my color series. So if you are unfamiliar, this is where I pick a color for usually just like the eyeshadow or sometimes like the whole look and focus on it as like a nice, chill, relaxed makeup tutorial. That's basically all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. If you like this style of video, it would be really helpful if you liked the video. I mean, and then also leave a comment down below of which color you'd like to see next in the color series. So far we've done orange, lavender, and rose, and today we're doing blue. I mean, I'm getting very dull, what's going on over here. So yeah, just let me know what you would like to see next. Also, don't forget to subscribe for weekly videos. And that's it, that's all I have to say. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I am back. So as you can tell, I am super freckly, but also I have some acne scars kind of intermittently through, intermittently? Anyway, it's just like blending in with the freckles pretty much, but I can see them and they're kind of, they're kind of annoying. I really wanted to go for a glowy, luminous base. So first I'm gonna use my Iconic London Illuminator. It's very, very shiny, I love her. Um, and she has a lot of, coverage behind it as well. So if you are fair in complexion, it may be a little too orange on you because there is quite a bit of pigment behind it. But it is ultimately gonna get covered up by my foundations. The disclaimer was for no reason, pretty much. <laughs> but I do really notice a difference with this one because it does have such a heavy color in it. I could usually see it coming through underneath my foundation. So she's the best. I love her. I want to be a glowy queen and this is what this product does for me. So into huge and just blend that completely out. I apply it pretty much all over my face except for my forehead. I feel like it just looks a little greasy if it's on my forehead. So I just do cheeks, nose, and chin. Next for a luminous foundation, I'm using the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. I have mine in the shade. L3 Nude. The beef that I have with this foundation is the undertones aren't completely right for me and they don't have a lot of options for undertones. Shade wise, this is like the level of pigment that I need for my skin tone, but I'm just like a green yellow person and the undertones are quite pink on me, but we make do. I love the finish of it, so she, she can pass, she passes. Next, I'm gonna be working on my eyeshadow. Both of the palettes that I'm using for my eyes are from ColourPop and they are known to have quite a bit of fallout with a lot of their palettes. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love ColourPop's formula, but it is kind of uh, dusty sometimes. <laughs> so first I'm gonna be establishing a transition shade using the nude mood palette i sweep that across the crease and then into a slight v in the outer corner next i'm going to be using my blue moon palette and i'm going to be using the deepest blue in the palette called clued in and i'm just going to sweep that all across the lid it takes a couple of layers to build up. It's quite a sheer formula, but eventually you'll get there. I'm just using a Moda Pro shader brush and it gets the job done pretty quickly. Next, I'm gonna hop back into the Nude Mood Palette and use the Deepest Brown and place that in the outer corner and really just try and stay along the V shape. It, one, deepens up the blue and two, makes the transition look a little bit more normal. And as you can tell, I flip my brush over to the clean side of the brush to diffuse out the color a little bit and I'll flip back over to the side with the pigment on it to build up the pigment where I want it to be. This is one of those things that helps with definition that nobody really talks about in a tutorial, but it really, really helps to use both sides of the brush. Next, I'm gonna be using a blue shimmer across the lid just to build up a little bit more pigment and kind of just make it a little bit more special. And then next, I'm going to be placing a inner corner color. If you watch my channel for any period of time, you would know that I always use an inner corner color. It just makes it more interesting and like you know how to do makeup. I don't know, it's just like such a simple step, but it really makes a difference. Next, I'm gonna be diffusing a light blue matte color across the transition shade, just to mesh the brown and the blue together a little bit more. I get such 90s vibes whenever I see brown and blue together. And I don't know, I'm kind of here for it. It's very, very cute. If you can tell by my side part, I am definitely a millennial. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I definitely think that brown and blue are kind of coming back. Next, I'm gonna hop back into the dark brown color in the nude mood palette and define the outside V a little bit more 
I'm using a smaller brush and it's a lot more dense and it's kind of acting as a little bit of a liner. A lot of times I like using eyeshadow for liners because it makes it a little bit more easy to place the liner and you really can't mess up. This is of course very, very optional. <laughs> Gosh, why do I take so long? Hurry up, oh my gosh. Okay, I think I'm done. Next, I'm gonna hop back into the Nude Mood palette and use the lightest brown in the palette. And again, just blow out the transition shade as much as possible. I don't wanna have a stark color difference between my skin tone and the color on my eyes. I want it to kind of mesh together as well as a blue and brown can mesh together on my eye. Okay, trigger warning. Next, I'm gonna be lining my waterline with this eye pencil from Essence. It's in the shade Hot Chocolate. Okay, so now I am done. That is the completed eye look. I'm just gonna copy the same thing onto the other eye really quick, and then I will be back to finish up the eyelashes and the rest of the complexion. Okay, so next I'm going to continue the transition color onto the bottom eyelash. First I was using a liner brush, but it was just taking too long. So I switched to my original fluffy brush and I'm just pinching the brush to create the shape that I want. I just want a cohesive color from top to bottom. Next I'm going to be using this Hourglass Unlocked Mascara for the mascara. And mascara is mascara, <laughs> it turns out. I love the way the eyes turned out. I didn't practice this one, I usually do. It just was, it was just a fun little surprise, quite honestly. If you do recreate any of my looks, I would love it if you would tag me on Instagram. I would absolutely love to share it and to see it. Okay, next I'm going to finish up my complexion. I didn't do that because I was afraid of fallout and I actually didn't get a lot of fallout, so I was kind of just freaked out for nothing. I'm just gonna be using four dots of concealer, one underneath each of my eyes, on the nose, and then on the chin. I mostly use concealer to brighten. I don't use it for concealing things. So that's that's the tea. And I'm just using a big eyeshadow brush to blend out my concealer. I found that I like using this method a lot better than like a big foundation brush because it gives you a little bit more precision and really minimizes lines on your face. Gorgeous. Okay, so next I'm going to be setting everything with this flower powder. It's from Beauty Bakery. I like it. I probably won't buy it again, but it's what I have and I'm using it. <laughs> it is really, really fine powder, so it really does a great job at minimizing anything you don't want to see. So I put that on the under eyes and then as well as underneath my where I'm going to place my bronzer to kind of just chisel out a nice little flat face. <laughs> you know how I like it, nice and flat. Okay, and then I'm blending away the rest of the excess powder with a big fluffy brush. Next, I'm using my new favorite bronzer. This is by Vesca. It's in the shade Kissed by Santorini. It is such a nice bronzer. I feel like everybody raves over like the Charlotte Tilbury one, and this one is way, way better. It actually shows up whenever you place it. I mean, what a concept, but I love the shade of it, and I really like the range that they have. They have, I think, seven different bronzer shades. I just did a review of Vesca last week, so I will place that in the cards if you are interested or if you missed out on it. It's a wonderful bronzer. Brand. I really, really like a lot of their products. It really is just like the Goldilocks bronzer of my collection. A lot of my bronzers are way too light or way too dark as far as like how, how fast it applies color to your face. And yeah, this is just like the perfect in between. It doesn't apply too much. It doesn't apply too little. It's just right. So with that, I'm just sculpting out some cheekbones and then blending it in like I was born with these cheekbones. <laughs> And then also I apply some to my forehead just with whatever is left over on the brush. Next, I'm going back in with the setting powder and setting underneath the bronzer just to flatten out that area. That's the spot that I don't put highlight on and I want to look as small as possible to keep the illusion that I have cheekbones. 
Next, I'm using Essence the Blush in the shade 10 Befitting. I love this blush compact. It is the perfect size. It fits everywhere. I don't know why I'm obsessed with it, but it's just so little and cute and I really like it. And it's a beautiful color. Next, for my highlighter, I'm going to be using this Nabla Skin Glazing Powder. This is in the shade Ozone. It just looks like a nice, like, dewy finish. I don't even know how to describe it. It doesn't look like a highlighter to me. It looks way more sheer than that. It just kind of looks like your face is just, like, naturally dewy, but not sweaty. I don't know. I like it. It looks cute. Finally, I'm going to finish up the face with this brow gel from e.l.f. This is called the Wow Brow. I have mine in the shade Neutral Brown. This is by far one of my favorite brow products. I kind of skipped using a pencil altogether just because I liked the effect that this already gave. It kind of already looks like my brows are filled in when I use it. So it's just perfect and it's a really good price. Finally, for the lips, I'm going to be lining it with this Becca Pouty Lip Liner. I tried so hard not to use this in this video because I'm pretty sure I just use it in like the past few videos. I really, really like the shade. It's wonderful for my lips and it's just, it's just a good formula. And I feel like nobody talks about this. Is that just me? So a tip to apply lip liner a little bit easier, try pursing your lips and then filling it in. It really helps it whenever you have that tension in between your lips to make a straight line. Finally, I'm going to finish it off with the Pat McGrath lipstick in the shade Skin Sane. It's a lovely, super soft formula, and I think it pairs really nicely with the blue. So the final look, I am living for this look. I usually test all my videos, like I said, I usually test the look usually a couple days in advance, or at least like try and understand what it's going to be like, and this one I just did completely from scratch. And I'm getting all the 90s vibes. It looks very, very trendy right now. And yeah, it's just really cute and a fun thing to try out. I think a lot of people are scared to try blue because it looks so unnatural or they think I need blue eyes to try blue. You can really make it work. I suggest getting creative and pulling out those crazy blue colors. So again, don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed already and like this video if you liked the video. Let me know what color you'd like to see next in the series, and I will see you at the same time, at the same place, next week. Bye! Um, I don't know what else to say. Okay, bye.